So far we've been using our for loops as statements. They haven't given us back anything, they have been doing something for us. And that's a big part of why our versions of the eval poly have had vars all over the place. And we, we had to have vars because we were writing a statement and we had mutations in it. It is possible to make our for loops act as expressions as well. And we do that by including the yield keyword. So, whereas previously, we said for i in 1 to 10, print line i, we had a side effect here. It was doing something. It wasn't giving us back uh, a value. In order to have it give us back a value, we want to put in yield. And then, and we can use curly braces if we want, but we want to give it the expression that we want to yield. Uh, the simplest thing to do would be to just put in an i there, and then I get back some sequence from 1 to 10. <clears throat> Turns out that when I do this on a range, I get back something called a vector, which is kind of a cross between an array and a list. It's indexable like an array, but it's immutable like a list. Maybe I wanted to get the value of i squared, in which case I would have something like this, or of course I could do whatever other complex function I wanted. So just putting in the yield allows us to produce values and have the for use as an expression instead of a statement. Let's go back to our eval polys and see how we could use that. Well, so if we wanted to have one of these versions Turns out the way we're doing pow, because we're constantly multiplying it, it pretty much has to have a var. But this first version here, the only var was a sum. And so we could write a different version of it. And how about we call it eval poly yield. I'm going to get rid of the sum completely and instead of adding all of these things into a sum I'm going to yield them and then once I've yielded them I want to add them all together. How do we add them all together? Well we call sum. Now it's tempting to just put dot sum down here but the dot binds higher than the yield so that attempts to call sum on the stuff that's in curly braces which won't work. So in order to do this we need to put the basically the whole for loop inside of parentheses and then call sum on the result of that. And we can add a call to this and run it and yet another zero. Okay so by putting in the yield we are now actually producing a new collection that has all of these values inside of it and then we can call sum to add them all up instead of having this var up here that was kind of calculating the sum as we went. But this yield allows us to, to now do this in a more functional style so there are no vars and we have no mutation inside of here. Uh, our 4 is producing values and then we're using those values that are produced from the 4.